Okay, welcome back. Um, we'll start. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sorry for that last week. I don't know. I'm still having issues. Um, but um, what where we are starting is if we go back to the blackboard. Um, go back to the blackboard assessment page. Um, we're starting with the portfolio, and that's what your delivery plan is going to tell let, let, tell you that. Um, in week 10 or 11, we'll be starting with the uh, portfolios. So that's where you have to, you have to, um, whatever the theory you have done, you start applying that to your project. Okay. So I went through a brief introduction um, last week. I'll repeat that today. Um, listen to that. And as I said to you in the email, um, brief email I sent you on Friday, the weekly logs are must. So it tells you what you're going to do during the week what has been done in that particular day, okay? So um, so there's no point for you arguing later that no, I haven't got any instruction of what you're going to do during the week. If you're not clear, you got to clear that in the Monday before you leave, okay? Then um, once the introduction is done, once the um, steps, you know, when you look at any standard project planning steps, that, that was actually your second or a third question in your time management some of the steps involved in project management. Okay, What is the first step? I said to you that we've got to define what is the problem. We don't know what is the problem itself. So that's what we are trying to do. So with a garage build, um, there is a requirement um, for the college um, for them to um, build a double garage um, with, a, with a double doors um, so that um, the executives, especially when they have these vehicles um, during the non-contact or during the break, they want to go and pass there so that it is uh, basically uh, protects uh, their vehicles from then one. Right? We tend to prefer, right? If you're going for a for a travel or if you're going overseas, what do you do? Your car, you don't leave it on the verge or uh, it deteriorate to the to sun and um, weather weather conditions, right? Because it can get really really bad, right? So that's what they have. Um, uh, we want to make sure, uh, give them a beautiful um, construction with with all the uh, quality and you know and uh, complete risk free assets, so that for the management these execution plans should make a sense for them to execute um, um, this particular project. You know, and you have to generalize this particular project in a way that you are a project manager, right? You are not doing one build. You might be getting more projects like this, right? So there is a way, there is a lesson learned uh, concept um, in these uh, in the, all the portfolio that you're going to do. You've got to write about your experiences, what you have done with the project, what was your experience with the project in managing time, in managing risk, you know, what uh, plans you had for procurement, what plans you had for quality, right? What you planned really worked it out. What is the variance? What is the cost variance? What is the schedule variance? Right. Can you capture that in the uh, plan? Right. So that's what. So the, all these tools, especially your Excel and Word, Word Excel and, uh, project, are going to help you. Word is mainly a reporting tool. Like if you want to create a report like this, um, last time I showed you an example of uh, execution plan. Right. So the execution plan, how does it look? You have to type it in the Word in the end. Right? You have to take the information from the spreadsheet calculations. Uh, the schedules that you have done in the Microsoft project, put them into a execution plan. Okay, I gave you a template for that. All these documents, especially when I say these templates are, you have got to use them in your project, right? They are the best. But if you find something um, better than that, share. You know, try to bring them for the team. You know, allow it to share with us. I'll cross verify it if it does it does meet the requirement, right? because you need all these evidence to complete your portfolio. Okay. So project settings, I'm, I'm, I made you clear that the set of documents and templates I'm going to give you um, um, with the drawing plans, with the detailed drawing plans. I went through these detailed drawing plans last week so that you can continue on the next step of estimation. Once your scope is confirmed, once your requirement, client requirement is confirmed, we go into basically estimated. Right. Because we want to know what is the structure for the project. What is the team structure for this project? What is the activity structure for this particular project? Okay. 
So in this particular project, you know, the risk is very critical. You know, you've got to um, identify those risks, um, ad administrate those risks um, as well. Um, so in terms of the background, um, so identify, meet the deadlines, mitigate those risks. Um, but for that, first thing would be how do we identify that particular risk? Right? How do we identify that particular risk? So in that case, we might have a meeting for that. The last assessment is an observation, is a controlled observation. So you've got to work as a team. You've got to execute that particular meeting, get that requirement. If I say one is a building supervisor, one is a, a structural engineer, get the feedback, try to question them, right? I, are, and you've got to see them involved in the project, give them a, a innovative ideas and take those innovative ideas in identifying what are the risks in the project and how can we mitigate those risks, right? So you've got to um, understand uh, the expectations of the interested parties who, is, who are the different stakeholders. I gave you a different list of stakeholders. I look at their title, what they are involved, what they typically do. Okay, if you're not clear of them, ask me again, because these resources, whatever the team structure that you have, right, you could, could, could be spread into a hierarchy, but these are your resources, whatever the duty you're going to put whatever the effort you're going to put in the project will multiply it by their by their contribution to the project right a lot of them they don't work full time like like building supervisor for example or a builder or a building supervisor has a full time role project manager you has a full time role but architect doesn't have a full time role they only come in the first month once the plans are got approved he will just leave he will just walk out nothing to do with it because he got his layout approved his uh, uh, his aesthetics are approved, his out structure is approved, in interior is approved. Uh, he has to, he doesn't have any requirement, right? Do you understand that, right? Architecture is not required. So, uh, for example, surveyor, land surveyor is not required. Once the site plans are given, we don't need him later. So their contribution could be 10%, should be 20%, right? But as a building supervisor, he needs 100%. And you've got to, you got to allocate resources, level those resources into your project and so on. So any of these roles, we'll discuss them. We'll discuss them as we go into the um, uh, session. Um, but more importantly, I gave you some milestones. Um, that's where you got your summaries are sitting there. Um, those works should be performed. Um, but again, they are baselines. I gave you a baseline. If you want to start on the 5th of May, it's up to you, 5th of May. But the gap between one activity and uh, other activity, if I am saying it should be five days, five business days, keep that five business days. If you want to go for six, it's all I don't want. But be clear that what is the scope of the project? The scope of the project should be a budget of 5,000. Duration of the project the to give me should be completed within the five weeks, no more than that. Okay. So you got to do those plus and minus. Planning is all about doing a trial and error. It is under your control. Put structure to it. Don't ram it. Oh, the cost is not coming up to, um, you know, twenty thousand. Just go and put five thousand somewhere. No, it has to be a, There has to be a mean between that particular cost where it is actually going. Okay. So I gave you examples last time. You know, when you looked at it, a project like this. You know, when you when you look at project because this is a roadworks, um, civil works project. Um, so without a plan, you won't see anyone sitting there and doing something. Right. So you've got to manage your roadworks. You've got to manage the earthworks. Um, you will have surveyors on the on the ground, right? You have you will have project managers on the ground, right? Looking after traffic managers, making sure that whatever the single carriage that they have uh, has a traffic going on, so that they can build dual carriage on the other side, right? So any any things that you know they might have these design plans, right? They might have these profiles, cross sections. You know the chain age of the road, the complete file of the road. You know, in part of your road design, you will be maybe in stage two or stage three when you do it. But you do that, you understand for that you accommodate that risks involved, right? Like for example, when you do a vertical profile, right? The standards will tell you the minimum gradient. When you do a crown, minimum gradient. Right. If you don't do that, what is happening? 
maintenance operation guys will start but there is no operator because of your poor planning as a project manager Okay, and you got to address that. You got to you got to look after their calendars. Now, last time I quickly put all the tasks randomly into it. But how do we start? We got to do all the option settings. We got to create a calendar because there are some public holidays in your five weeks. Right? If you don't, you are lucky. You can use a standard calendar. But are we working nine to five? Are we working twenty four hours? You have you have to decide. If you're doing it twenty four hours, that five weeks can be completed in two point five weeks. But it's a residential construction. You won't see people working in the night. So you've got to adjust their calendars. You've got to look at their resource calendar. Right? Create their resource calendars and use those resource calendars to make sure when you are doing an operation like um, uh, compaction, um, then you make sure that we have the we have the equipment, we have the operator, we have also the supplies. A lot of the time, what happens is that you might be good in getting the equipment there, right? You have someone to supervise it, right? And and you also have an operator to do the job. But at the end of the day, you forgot to supply the diesel for it. What's going to happen? What you're going to do? You you not you're not you're not going to push um, um, your um, uh, road roller, right? It's too heavy, right? So you need to have that in in size related to that, materials related to that. Generally, when you have a depot like this, a big depot like this, you will have again someone who maintain it. When the truck goes, does an operation, come back, someone will have a quick look, verify, do a is missing, right? If the pressure is clearancing uh, the sites. Okay, all these has to be considered. Because mobilization of equipment itself can be a big project. Like the Basel uh, Highway, and you're building maybe a 30 kilometer road there, but itself is an other project for you. People will get, project managers will get paid maybe 100,000, 200,000 just to do that job just to mobilization, only one part of your project. Then mobilize, once you mobilize it, you also have to demobilize the equipment. What is demobilization? What do you have to do during the demobilization? People are commission, you're commission something, then commission something. What do you do with demobilization? Can you be louder, please? Like exactly, there. because you don't want to leave that truck there. Work is done, and the words you leave there. The broken pipes, you are putting pipes, you're putting a sewage pipes. One of them is broken, you just leave it there and go. It's not going to happen like that, right? Because they are heavy. Before you demobilize, have a hold point, have a meeting, go and do a thorough check, then try to return all the equipment that you have hired, all the fuels that you have hired. You got to return them to the base. That is part of demobilizing the equipment. Commissioning will be also done the same way as sometimes as decommissioning or demolishing. Right? If you don't like that structure, the structure has become very, very old, people will demolish that particular structure and put a new build. So demolishing is part of decommissioning. Right? Here in Australia, you don't go into your site with a big hammer, big excavator, and just push everything down. No, you have to get a permission for decommissioning. It has to have a plan how you're going to demolish. Because when you're demolishing, if someone is under the structure and gets killed, then you will be liable for it. 
you took a bobcat and you were moving it without surveying what is underground and you broke some pipes, you will be liable. Okay, so that that is the reason you need a plan. So when you when you look at it, um, when you look at it um, with the with the sort of um, scope I gave you, you got any questions here with the scope? Except these um, site visits, as I said, we'll do a site visit today, later around 10, 30, 11. Um, I'll take you around the um, campus, and then I'll show you the main the main. Um, um, you know, uh, uh, points, checkpoints where the people are coming, moving to the site, and that might be some sort of a risk assessment, right? So, um, as a zip folder, um, is, uh, download that um, um, zip folder, and you have this time quality procurement and risk portfolios. A couple of um, and also uh, we still start you because the estimates are very time consuming process uh, but in the afternoon um, um, majority of the time I'm going to give you the feedback and you can work individually on your project okay for the feedback sessions I'm going to um, put some slots here um, book in those slots and see me upstairs. Um, I'll give you the feedback of the of the 80 months that you have submitted okay so uh, fingers crossed if there is no resubmission then you can just work on the portfolios okay every portfolio i will allocate a, a particular week i'll go through the portfolio questions and answers how they need to be answered at the same time we will improve the plan for the project we'll read interpret the drawings in more details right we will optimize the plan that we have my job is to give you a base plan a baseline plan once the baseline plan is there it is your job to optimize that base plan, right? And then later, if if I throw some scenario of there is a change on the site, you should know where to go and address those change, resubmit the revisions as well. Okay, that's part of implementation. Okay. So coming back um, to the spreadsheet. Okay, so. Coming back to the uh, spreadsheet here, I gave you um, three tabs. And last week, I asked you to put some um, durations as well as the, um, the cost estimates and see if we can start. Delegation is basically resource allocation, right? From your project team. You've got a project team here, right? You're happy with the structure. You want to change this particular hierarchy, go and change. What I said is that you are the project manager. Uh, everything has to be informed to you. And you have the coordinator who will look after your designs, supplies, and surveyor, surveyor sort, of, sort of a, um, a, a assistant or a secretary for you to help, right? Then you have the engineer who is going to give you a, a structured, um, integrated uh, plans, verified plans. Then you have the, you've got a program manager, um, you've got a facilities manager, um, you also have a project facilitator. These are all people involved with, with links to the owner. And they will give you anything on the budget, anything you have to negotiate, budgets, access to the sites, all these, these people are good. Then you have these builders, standard builders, civil works, steel works, you know, uh, inspector, building inspector. Uh, then you've got a window man because we've got some glazing on the site as we go through the plan will tell you. Then the welding special usually requires a Sparky. Uh, how many of you understand Sparky? Sparky. The electrical stuff, we are basically electrician is called Sparky. So that do confuse um, sometimes. Um, you'll also have a welder. Welder um, is welding um, on the site, structural site. So Sparky is mainly related to your electrician. And the uh, welder will be a different man. Plow roof, plumber, then the laborer. If any of these trades are not there, sometimes I tend to use the site uh, jargons on the top of project management it new then there will be a site related jargons which you will not experience until you go okay. so you made you made progress here i told you to basically look at your feasibility look at your um, scope of scope of works if you added any anything, are we missing anything? Here? 
estimate, do a comprehensive risk analysis, then um, uh, provide a plan. Uh, monitored and controlled, um, include your communication plans. Um, um, communication plans is basically telling you how we need to communicate, what form to communicate. It's more related to your project team. Um, so you've got your estimates, big down work, procurement plans, Josh, can you hear me? I can indeed. No, no, switch off, switch off your microphone. Um, I won't be able to hear your microphone. Basically, um, I'm... Okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah, switch the microphone off. You know, basically, um, uh, we are in the project portfolios. Um, have a quick... Um, listen to what we are doing with the portfolio, um, but you must start with your written assessments. You, you must go through the theory, uh, but I can explain you later um, that particular theory and uh, majority of that uh, recordings are available on your Blackboard Collaborate. If you go into your Collaborate session here, so into your Collaborate session, um, and if you want to see the past recordings, just click on Recordings and you'll be able to see your uh, recordings here. And basically the first thing you need to do would be recording the range and just change that date to some 2020 there. Um, you'll be able to see all my past recordings, you know, whatever is useful. Um, it's been highlighted with the, with the name of that particular uh, file. Um, go through it and um, try to, try to um, learn a majority of the, the theory on your own. And it would be interesting to see if um, Sean can help you in the in the learning content. So learning content is divided into these four sections: um, time, risk, um, quality, and procurement. Each of these um, learning content has um, uh, an overview, um, some um, some um, lecture notes, and the standards attached to it. And later some in-class activities. You don't have to do in-class activities, but it is a it is a, a as a non doesn't mean that you don't have to um, submit it, basically. Um, there's no requirement for you to submit all the in-class activity outcomes, but it's a good practice just to do some exercises there. 
Um, so Blackboard has these learning content and assessments. You know, assessments is basically where um, you need to start writing your uh, answers to these um, written assessments. So again, I have added the critical documents with a recording um, attached to that. Um, I hope um, that will help you to start working on the written assessments. And we have started the portfolio. Um, so the portfolio is what we are working today, and it is for us actually the week 10. So that's the reason we started with the portfolios. So just listen to what we are doing, um, then we will take the questions uh, a bit later. Um, okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, are you able to see the screen? Oh, this is such a uh, you are not um, were able to see the screen, but. Uh, yeah, now now we should be able to see the screen. Um, but I, I was going through um, whatever you have on this left side with the learning content, collaboration session, um, assessments uh, are the key thing. The welcome page is important, and you've got to make sure you have accepted the delivery plan. If you don't accept the delivery plan, you won't be able to see the you won't be able to see the learning content, or you won't be able to see any of the assessments. So make sure the welcome page accepts the accept the DAP. There is four sessions: time, risk, quality, and procurement. Make sure in the each of the session um, you go through sources, overview, some in-class activities. I have also with tools which includes your uh, detailed exercising on Word, Excel, and the uh, project. Um, so each session is quite similar. Once you have a bit of a confidence, you can start making an attempt. The assessments, majority of the recordings, again, they are available in the collaborate. Critical documents are attached here. And we are going through the portfolio today, project portfolio. Um, you don't have any access to it. The reason could be your DAP. If you don't accept your DAP, you won't be able to see it. Um, so um, yeah, we were going through earlier with this uh, particular project, um, going through how uh, we would be able to manage um, some works like these. Um, you know, this is a bustle highway. You might know it. Um, we traveled um, the southwest from uh, Mandura to um, Basalton. Um, so I went through whatever the discussion we were hearing earlier is basically related to this video um, to make sure. You understand uh, project project management is very crucial for any of the works to carry um, like this as planned. You know, in terms of equipment, mobilizing, demobilizing equipment, um, anything for your contractors to be on the site. Um, you know, your design being approved and traffic management, for example, all these aspects of your management will involve um, 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 sort of a project management. And we are going through. Um, that basic aspects of project management in this unit. Okay, so I'll stop this video here. We'll come back to the. Um, so even that um, um, spreadsheet uh, is available with a zip file. Um, on your um, assessment page, you should be able to see it now once you accepted your delivery plan. So this is a spreadsheet that we are going through. Um, so you be a manager for this particular garage build, and you've got to manage um, um, the scope of works, um, plans, risk plans, procurement plans, and also quality plans, um, so that you have a complete execution details of how this project is going to be done. So. I'm going through the structure here, so uh, come back here, please. So, um, rest of the class. So, even with these, if you're not happy with the summaries, if, uh, generally I said your your words that you choose to put in your plan should be an action words. It should be like an type of statement. Right? If a particular word is um, uh, is not um, uh, doesn't make sense. Um, please, um, please try to um, please try to uh, rewrite that particular. Um, sorry, uh, what's happening there? Are you okay? Are 
Are you okay? We can uh, we can talk a bit later. There's a couple of students online. I just need to go through the session. But if you want a break, just go and take a break. I will have this recording in you. So in this case, um, it's easy. And to, uh, we tend to um, write that particular um, you know, statements. It doesn't, if there is any spelling mistakes, even spelling mistakes or like verbs are not there. Um, many articles are not there, rewrite and read them. So in this case, I'll just go through, um, say for example, general conditions and approvals. This can be part of your 12 week plan. You can, you can separate it. You can, you can give it like a two, three weeks gap and start your project. Okay. So um, in this case, when you when you're trying to um, create a general conditions here, scope is important. So that might take some time. Right? You're doing it. Last time it was spent almost five hours there. So that is part of the duration or the effort that you have put. Try to understand what the project is. Okay. Then we looked at the feasibility in this case it, um, in terms of cost, time, and quality. Are we going to have this particular project? Definitely, we'll go ahead with the project. You know, there's not, but again, you can make a decision going onto the site today. Um, do you want to go ahead with the project or not? But there's no choice for us. We have to go with the project. But generally, the projects what's going to happen is that we analyze that, and if it is not feasible on on my side, what is the point of investing five weeks there if I'm not going to make some money there? And um, whatever the risk I'm taking, um, if I'm not going on the profit side, what's the point? Right. So that's part of the plan. Then finalize the build plan. Sit with your uh, draftee. Sit with your engineer, architecture, and finalize your building plans because sometimes it might be longer. They might check a standard plans, you know, footings. So that's what your drawing plans are for. So we went through this um, information last time. Uh, very important to read the. Uh, um, on the title blocks of your page, uh, what scales they have done. In this case, they put it as not to scale, um, but sometimes later there will be a scale provided. These are all printed in A3 paper. And so you've got to see uh, for this particular our construction drawings. Um, then later, once they are approved, sorry, once they are approved, they become construction drawing. But if we are making decisions, then We're designing it. If you make it too light, the wind can just take it off. Right. So we got to go through the standards. Standards will tell you how to design this. will tell something on the uh, actually it will be different so the site visits are meant for you to see if there is any unforeseen risk that is not covered in the drawing plans okay climate zone um, you know in this case um, there is no uh, snow for us maybe it might happen one in 500 years we might have pine park snow but we don't have a design for that 
Import, uh, sorry? For the corro corrosion. Corrosion, corrosion and also loading. We need to apply it in, in this area. Uh, in this area, yes, corrosion, corrosion may be applied because we, we, are, we are close to, um, to, to the sea. We are close to the beach, you know, so corrosion, um, but, but majority of that corrosion, uh, because we are not using a brick and mortar, so it is mainly steel. If you galvanize it properly to a higher rating galvanizing, you're covered. And when you put the sheets, you got to be very clear. You cut the sheets by hand. Don't use the grinders. If you use the grinders, even with any lintels or members or anything like this, you don't use a grinder. Grinder will, grinder will, can easily corrode. It will oxidize the place, and it easily will corrode. The better is by hand. You use a proper snippers and use it by hand. Okay. So climate zones, ball rating, which is basically a bushfire um, rating. So again, there's not a vegetation. Observe that if there is a big bush. Luckily, majority of the bush has been cleared on the college side. So um, uh, if you're not aware, um, Joshua, we are, we are actually going to do this particular project um, on campus itself. You know, you can, you can see the location of the campus. This is a monster campus um, if you haven't been here. But um, this is where the, the actual garage build site is going to be. And that is for these um, executives who are part of this uh, training environment. And they want to park their cars here. Um, so here on this side of the build, um, this side of the build, I think if I'm playing a video, um, something is happening with the video. Being on the the side here on the location. So around this particular location, the, uh, there's a vegetation here, but usually there used to be a big um, vegetation here. Because that is a risk for any that you have. And what happens if, uh, if there is a higher You might have the, the basic idea now um, with the project. I think the best thing would be for you to read the delivery plans, uh, go through the delivery plans, go through the learning content. 
um, don't start the assessments yet um, or the project. Uh, but what I will do is uh, with the project, I will record the session today. But the uh, rest of them, in terms of uh, where to start, you know, um, go, in, go into your uh, recordings, go into your um, content, uh, collaborate, collaborate co content, and you will be able to see that recordings and the documents. I'll, I'll give you a call uh, a bit later in the week. Um, and basically, uh, I don't have any of your contacts. Um, if you can send me your contacts, then I'll I'll tell you, uh, or maybe I'll give you a quick call to make sure you understand. Okay, um, but the blackboard is not really uh, working. But you can be online. You know, the screen when I start to share the screen, there's something really going on right here. You can hear to me what I'm telling, but um, you won't be able to see anything on the screen. Thank you. So this one, um, you need to. Um, yeah, you need to uh, make sure uh, you revise them um, and also put the durations for the these particular activities. At the same time, um, do a bit of a cost background, approximately tell how much it is going to be. Right. In this case, I have excluded my planning everything because the fees is paid by the um, by the owner. I have excluded it, but if you want to include again, include it and it just helps. Okay. Sorry? Procurement. Where here in the general conditions you're saying? Um, no, we don't procure here yet because this is purely a purely approval of your plans. But it's planning. planning, you don't uh, you don't put anything um, about your uh, procurement. You know, you will will start when we start. Um, when we start the the site works, you're saying you, as a procure because see feasibility when you finalize your estimates, submit your council, sign your contract, uh, site material handling and lifting strategy. Oh yeah, you can you can add you can add um, your planning if you want to add uh, to something on um, your plans. You know you can have your uh, procurement yeah, uh, procurement uh, procurement quality. Um, Risk, uh, risk management uh, plans. Yeah, you can have that. You can have that plans. Just put four hours for that one. If you're putting that part of that, you know, convert that. So you'll have, because basically what we are saying is that we'll have at least, you know, how we can start procuring materials. You know, what expected quality and how you verify those quality and what are the basic risks in the project. You have it in the planning itself. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. So you can insert an activity like this. So you can revise. You can revise like that. Have a discussion. Revise that, and you can add an activity um, like that. So you can write these um, basic plans. You can write basic plans. I said to you, you know, uh, wow. Well, yeah. To make it simple, use a half day, full day, or two days. Don't go into uh, five point or six. No, there's no point. You know, just just do it a half a day, or a full day, or a two days, three days, like. That. Yeah. yeah. So um, because see, the, this project, as I said, is more about is 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 more about getting the overall detail right. But in, the, in, in terms of its, in terms of it, these niche values in the original project they might differ. You might do it in half an hour, yeah. but I don't want you to go into that detail. Or that. Just use those standard four, eight, sixteen hours. That's it. Four, yeah, all of them you see in four, eight, sixteen. That's all maximum. Half uh, a day, half a day. Yeah, if you sorry, sorry, if you have a holiday, that will be addressed in the calendar. Anyway. Okay, let's see the estimates. I told you um, once you once you're done that, we'll go into the estimates. Your estimates, um, your estimate summary um, is is actually this one here. So that's your overall material cost. Okay. So what what we are doing here in the project? Let me see. I can share screen. Share. 
So what we're doing in the in the entire project here is calculating, you know, calculating like something like slab, like right? slab, concrete slab, concrete foundations. So how much concrete we are actually using? Like, where do we get these values of concrete? Yeah. From the drawings, exactly right. Your drawings will tell you. So let's see, let's see the details of this one here. Let's see the details of this one here. I told you that it is 300 by 300 cross section area and a perimeter of 27.65. Okay. And also the slab is 7.44 into 6.44. That gives you an area. The depth of that is gained 100 millimeter. That gives you volume. How do we measure the concrete? The, the, the concrete that is going to come out of the site. How do we measure it? No, meter cubes. It is a volume. It is a volume. So a lot of time when you look, when you see your drawing plans, you will get a plain view of your drawing, but you may not, you, you have to go a bit on an, uh, other elevations to see what is the depth of that particular footing or a slab, right? So it's important to get the depth of that particular, um, particular slab, 100 meters. Standard is 100 meters or 150 meters, 150 millimeters or 200 millimeters not more than that. That's a standard slab thicknesses from 100, 150, 200 millimeters. The slab thicknesses, this one you see, the slab thickness the standard is like 100, 150, 200 millimeters. But, sorry, of the depth, of the depth of the, no, foundation, this is slab and top. Okay, of the slab, I'll see in the drawing, I'll show you in the drawing plan. If you go into drawing plan, your schedule, I think it's a schedule number. Um, yeah, schedule yeah, number. Even in the drawing, thank you, thank you. So you can see here, this one has a Z beam details of your drawing. It shows slab thickness is how much? 100. But what is the area? You got to see the area from the plane view, 7.44, 6.34 meters, 7 by 6 base feet. But you first let do the um, foundation. The foundation. 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 You did. When I did the foundation, see you can be. See this is all about your volume calculations. If you've done your basic maths, you can you can do it different way. You can do my foundation like this, right? because it has got an axis here. I run along the perimeter. I run along the perimeter. Right. So I'm going like this. You get the perimeter mm -hmm. because I got the cross section in, right? And then I have this slab here, which is going from here. So it's going from here, slab like this. So it looks like a beam with a depth of 100 and going again as a plain view of 7.34 and 6.33 something. But you can also do this one differently, the calculation. How? Because this is this is slab, this is the foundation. Right? The same geometry could be done a bit differently. How you can do it? Because my foundation is what now it has become 300 by 300, the perimeter. This is 7.3 to 6 into 100 mil. That is giving you the volume of the slab. This is giving me the volume of the foundation, right? How can you do this one differently? The same color, same volume, how can you do it differently? What we are calculating, you are cal calculating the total volume of concrete that you need for the project. How can you do it differently? Geometry only, I'm asking you. Gosh, how can you do this one differently? The same volume. Sorry, sir. Exactly. Brilliant. So what I can do is exactly. I can do I can do my foundation like this, right? And I can do my slab 
like this. But it is the same volume. There is no difference in the volume. Same operation. Same operation. Volume will be the same. But you are arriving to that volume different. In first case, my, my slab is 7 by 6 into 100, 300 by 300 foundation. But now I'm doing 400 by 300 foundation. Slab is offset by 400 mil on all the sides. So my slab will be smaller because I took that depth into the foundation. Is that making sense? Is the same thing? It, should, it will be the same thing. The volume that you're going to get will be the same. Okay? So that's how you got to calculate. Can you consider that a portion of the volume? Don't go into no, that. No. But what is FCR? FCR, last time I told you about that, fine coarse, um, fine coarse rocks. Because see what what you have. This is very important because the same same layers, same hatching will be. You will see that in your road design as well. Road sub base will have multiple layers, right? So as an example, if I if I go back, um, to this one here, where is the where is the sub base? So we should consider the rocks or which require your own. Where do we get the refined rocks? We can see here on the road what is happening here on the road. Then you put these different soils, and one of them is a fine core rock. Yeah. The aggregates that you're going to put will be of different density, different radiuses, right, and different type of soils. So you you need you need soft, harder, harder again softer type of different substrates that you have before you put your asphalt. Same thing they are doing in the in the uh, slab construction as well. Last in the in the end they will put a yellow sand on the top, and now on the top the yellow sand. After the yellow sand they will put a, a perforated sheet. So you have all the details. So you can see natural ground up to that. After that compacted fine coarse rocks there. Compact, you compact them. You put some water again. Compact them. Then you have these compacted yellow sand again on the top of. The and uh, SLA2 is a class of concrete? No. Con concrete is given on the on the top of the plan. Concrete is given here. Concrete is given here. Okay. And concrete slump is also given. Right? Just, uh, concrete um, slump is also